right, so we are going to demonstrate here the functioning of this little diff lock button I have put in. So this basically just takes over control of the solenoid that controls lock up to the center diff. This works on any um, any car that has the multi-plate transfer clutch, which is any auto, and then the manuals that have the variable torque distribution system, the VTD. Obviously when you're doing a tight circle like this, the wheels need to turn at different rates. That's why we have differentials in the front, the back, and the middle. So right now it is unlocked. And you see, I'm going to put it into a tight circle, I just got my foot, foot off the gas and it just crawls around like you'd expect it to. You'll watch when I lock it up, it will quickly, the torque bind will start to happen and the car will come to a stop all by itself. You see my feet? Not on the pedals. And now you'll see, unlock the switch, you hear a little clunk, and we start rolling again. So that is the proof that we are controlling the center differential with that little switch. Do it one more time, lock it up, feet are still here, off the brake, slows to a stop. The torque bind builds up, and now I'll unlock it, clunk, and we're back in business. And obviously this is not the way you want to use it because it's probably not the best, although it's probably not super hard on it either. But obviously the idea of the switch is, is you just lock the differential up before you go off road and then you leave it there. And you, depending on what you're doing, you can switch it off, but before you get something really slippery or whatever. Um, this is a lot easier on the center differential than letting the TCU control it because uh, I blew up my previous center differential, which we'll, we'll show you. <laughs> Normally it doesn't really lock it up until you actually start to have some tire slippage and that causes those plates to dig into the basket and um, well, then they get seized to the basket and they can't work. You see you get this thing out of the way. Uh, right, we got to lock this out of here. That's a good looking basket right there. <laughs> you might think so, but no. <laughs> Normally the center basket is driving these ones. And they're just kind of sprinting freely against these these outer ones here, right? So you remember, this is attached to our outer basket. Mm -hmm. So this can spin freely relative to the inner basket. Uh, so these ones normally, like, normally there's not much slippage either because your wheels are driving at the same speed, so they kind of just move together, but there's no torque transfer. But say you had your front wheels up in the air, right? And you were gunning the gas or whatever. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Those um, front wheels would just go ahead and spin and then these plates would move relative to each other. And what happens is there's a hydraulic system in here. This thing is actually a piston, and hydraulic pressure gets applied to it through this little hole here. That's why there's O-rings here. So there's like a passage actually involves this little pipe here, and then these passages in here apply mm -hmm. hydraulic pressure uh, onto this piston, and then it clamps this whole stack together. And that forces these all to rotate in concert, which transfers power from the rear, to, from the transmission out to the rear drive shaft here. Okay. And that's the mod we do with the switch. This little guy right here is the solenoid that controls the transfer. So it just, it's just a valve that opens up and sends um, hydraulic pressure to this or doesn't. Okay. So that, that's what we were actuating with the switch. Yes. And so the way this switch works is when there's no power to it, it's open. So it allows hydraulic pressure to flow through here and clamp this up. So when there's no power to the switch, you're fully locked. When you apply 12 volts to the, to the, to the um, solenoid, it's unlocked. It closes that. So, they, so actually, if you were in the field and desperate for this, you could actually just go under there and snip a wire and then you would be locked up. So the, the, uh, the idea behind that is, right, is that there's a series of plates that interlock between the two baskets. The TCU keeps that open most of the time. When it detects a wheel slip, it locks it up. So what happens if, say, you're off-roading and you're hammering it, right? <laughs> You get the wheels spun up really fast, and there's a little bit of a delay. Before the TCU locks it up, so what happens is those two plates are moving differentially to each other. And that solenoid kicks in, and those plates lock up pretty hard. And essentially what it causes those, over time, those teeth on those baskets, or on those plates, cut into the basket. So eventually they get jammed onto the basket. you have a lot of force being applied through exactly. like, you have a shock load. plates. Right. Um, and so they slowly like, kind of chisel away at those and then they eventually get jammed down there. And so even when that um, piston is applying pressure, the clutch back doesn't actually lock up and the center differential doesn't lock up. And at that point, you're in front wheel drive. Right. And better hope you have some tire chains with you. Otherwise, you might have a long day getting out of wherever you got yourself into.
don't we talk that thing. The way you should use this switch is like you should basically hit the switch when you are just driving along nicely or when you're at a standstill. Okay. Don't hit it when you're flooring it and the tires are spinning. Right. And, but essentially, that's what the, the TCU does is it hits the switch while the tires are spinning. And that's why the, this thing has got all chewed up. So, yeah, this can actually be... So basically, uh, crucial off-road mod. Yes, crucial off-road mod to add that switch. And super easy to do because you just before you go into something stupid you know you want a little extra traction you hit the switch lock the diff and then you're good yeah. <laughs> This is the magic switch, right? Diff lock. I bought this little one off Amazon that says diff lock on it. Because I wanted this light to come on when the diff is locked. The diff is locked when you're applying no voltage to the solenoid. I used a, a relay in there, a double pull, double throw relay to reverse the logic. So you can see this switch is really simple. I tapped into 12 volts I had run here for my um, seat heat and then uh, same thing, I tapped into a ground here, and then this little red wire here sends the signal off to the relay. So that's easy, right? So when the switch is on, it energizes the coil of the relay. This is this one here. That's all there is to that. So all the red, real magic happens up under the dash here. So what you're looking for is you got to find the transmission control unit. So here's the relay, and then this was the important one. This white and green wire. So this white and green wire I've split at the TCU. So normally it goes here from the TCU and it connects up back up through this harness all the way down to the transmission mm -hmm. and eventually into that solenoid we saw. And that's what controls that. So basically we've and we've set this to full manual. This is wired up differently than some people wire it up. Because I got that VTD in there and that, this TCU does not know how to control that diff. The logic we need to control that is different. I put this on full manual control. So it's either off or on. You could also wire like a, up a remote, an RC car ESC in there if you wanted to end with a little pot. If you wanted to have like variable torque there, almost like you can get in some of the uh, the Pro Drive STIs or something. Mm -hmm. You have the the, the DC CD, I guess they call it, Driver Controlled Center Differential. I guess it's not just the Pro Drives, but um, is that how they work? Yeah, essentially, yeah. They still okay. use the variable torque distribution, but then you just essentially can control the pulse width modulation. Like, which is exactly what the TCU does. It does pulse width modulation just like an RC car ESC does to that solenoid to, you know, partially lock it up. RC cars are so useful. But I didn't get that fancy. So it's either just off or on, and that's what it has to be. And so the other half of this equation is that for the TCU, you see there's this white wire connected up to the remains of that. That goes up to a resistor. It's a... 15 watt, I forget how many ohm resistor. I think it's like a 15 watt, um, let's say like 15 ohm or something. So it's all like a little less than an amp going through it. And basically that that's so that the TCU doesn't go into limp mode. Because if you have leave that wire disconnected at the TCU side, it sees that there's no current being drawn there. And it thinks you have a failure, right? It thinks you have a wiring failure and that you're not connected to your transfer solenoid anymore. And that'd be bad normally because I mean you'd be, your center would be fully locked all the time and that'd be a lot of wear on your car and your tires and all that kind of stuff. Right. So it's something they warn you of. So you put that load in there, that resistor, to fool it to thinking that the solenoid is still connected and not put you into limp mode. Um, so normally what you would do for most cars, if you're just doing this on a regular 4 eat where you hadn't swapped the center diff, you would do a double pull, double throw switch, and we can probably find a forum post link. There's a bunch of them about how to wire this up. So you take that solenoid and that solenoid is either connected to um, directly to ground, or a, no, it could just be nothing to, or it's connected to the TCU. So you can have it when it's switched to that, it's in normal mode where the TCU still controls it. Mm -hmm. And then that wire from the TCU is either connected to the solenoid or it's connected to the resistor. So basically you switch that, basically what you're doing is you're, that switch swaps out that resistor for the solenoid. So the, the TCU always sees that load there and doesn't go into limp mode then you can still manually control it. You could also do exactly what I did with this, which is maybe safer for off-roading so that the computer never controls it, so that it's always just getting a dummy load to the TCU, and then you just have a manual control of the solenoid at your switch. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's about all there is to it. It's really simple if, yeah, if you have any 
skill with electronics at all. You don't have to get dirty, you don't have to get into the car, it's super easy mod.